This week in legal blogging, in which we talk with leading bloggers from across the legal industry. My name is Bob Ambrogi, and I am the uh, author of the blog Law Sites and also the podcast Law Next. This program is presented by LexBlog, providing lawyers with turnkey digital publishing solutions and strategic consulting for 16 years. Uh, and just a reminder that you can find all of the past episodes of this show at uh, you, on YouTube at youtube.com slash LexBlog and the podcast version of this show uh, is available on Apple Podcasts and Spotify and whatever your favorite podcast player happens to be. And our guest today is Lisa Stam, who is the author of Employment and Human Rights in Canada. Lisa, how are you today? I'm well, how are you? Good, and you're, you're joining us from Toronto. Thanks for, thanks for doing that. How's everything up there? How have you been surviving uh, the pandemic and, and everything else that's been going on this year? Well, like every employment lawyer, it's been bananas since March. So it's been, uh, I mean, it's, it's, it's a happy problem compared to some areas of law. So I, I don't dare complain about it, but it's 2020 has been a crazy year. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I didn't mention, but your firm, you are the founder of a law firm called Spring Law. It's a virtual <laughs> Canadian uh, firm advising on workplace issues for employers, employees, and freelancers. Uh, mm -hmm. Tell us a little bit about your firm before we talk about your blog. Sure. So I founded Spring Law in uh, 2017, um, so three years ago, and I'm, I'm, I've been practicing for about 16 years, so I've had a collection of experience before that. Um, but I really wanted to set up a, a, a fully virtual paperless firm that had a very clear conveyor belt of data that would um, have all my data talk to each other very seamlessly um, and really push forward on delivering legal services in as innovative way as we can. Yeah. And why did you want to do that? What was your experience before that that, that made you want to go virtual? <laughs> Um, I, I, you know, I, I, I read a lot of, um, you know, I, I read Mitch Kowalski's, um, book, his 20, I think it's a 2008 book, but I read it at least in 2010, because I remember it being like a pivotal moment for me of, ah, that's the firm I want. You know, it was, it, it really oh. has always resonated with me. Um, and you know, Richard Susskind and just all the usuals, your stuff, of course, Bob, yeah. to, uh, and, and, you know, Jordan Furlong, all, all these thought leaders on what the delivery of legal services should look like going forward. And, and, um, and I say should deliberately because that's what clients want. That's what the market can bear and what the, the market wants. Yeah. Well, uh, certainly, uh, it, it's the right time to be having a virtual firm right now. Yeah, uh, and yeah. Uh, good for you. you know. It's interesting. In in I don't know if this is a Canadian thing because most employment firms in the United States are either employer or employee. Yeah. Is it unusual even in Canada that you would represent no, both sides? I mean, it's it's I I do find. I mean, I have a bunch of global clients, and I I do find uh, employment law in general is a little more polarized in the states. It really is one or the other. It's it's not like that here. It's I, I mean that um, I think when it comes to unionized workplaces, you, you sort of have to pick a side. But right. um, yeah, we represent both employers or employees and you know it, it can get tricky with conflicts sometimes but otherwise I think it makes me a better lawyer to see both perspective, uh, perspectives yeah. and sides of the table. Yeah yeah that's great. Uh, so as I said you have the blog Employment and Human Rights mm -hmm. in Canada which you've had for 11 years or so now uh, yeah. and uh, you were in a, a, a somewhat different place uh, when you started that. So tell mm -hmm. us what you were doing then and why you started the blog. Sure. So I was um, an associate at uh, Baker McKenzie, a big global firm. And um, I had a great partner at that point um, suggest to me, look, there's a billion employment lawyers out there. So um, you've got to figure out how to differentiate yourself, find some hook within the world of employment law that you find interesting and really get out there on that. So I did. Um, and I, um, uh, I've always loved tech and, and, and online stuff and so I, I really started just thinking about the impact of social media and technology on 
employers. And, um, and, and then in the fall of 2008, I reached out to Lexblog. I kept seeing your name at the bottom, you know, Lexblog at the, at the bottom of all these great blogs out there. <laughs> and, and so I reached out um, and um, yeah, and then got it all up and running by early 2009. Yeah, and what the, what's the focus of the blog? What is it that you wanted to do with the blog? I wanted to um, really speak to that issue and that nexus of especially technology, but but and in the workplace, but but human rights and employment law, just, just workplace law generally. But I I I have always tended to to gravitate towards those topics that really touch on technology in the workplace. Yeah, when you started the blog. Um, mm -hmm. had you, what, you know, what, what did you know about blogging other than you see it? I mean, what you, did, did it take you a while to kind of get into the routine of it? Did you figure out what you're doing to find your voice? Um, I have to say, I, I, I had some excellent training from Lexblog, right? In the early days, I, I you know, they had account rep assigned to me. Um, and and um, I think Lexblog was a lot smaller back then too. So it was a really, um, you know, I was one of the early Canadian uh, members of it all. So I, I got a lot of great attention and, and just um, a lot of great help. So just the speaking, figuring out who am I speaking to and really thinking through as uh, when I created the blog, who, who do I want to help? Who do, who do I want to be helpful to? Um, and it's always been, you know, that early training of how to just speak in English, get rid of the stupid Latin and just talk real stuff, <laughs> real English to right. people and help solve their problem. I, that, that really dates right back to that early training with Lexblog. Yeah. And who, who did you want to address your blog to? Who did you want the readership to be? Or who were you thinking of as the audience? Mm. See, and I think that's changed over the years quite a bit. So at the beginning, um, you know, I was a, what was I, maybe a six year associate at the time um, in a great big firm where I didn't I, I knew I wouldn't be pulling in great big global companies through my blog. I knew that it wasn't necessarily lead generation into my firm at the time. It was more about building personal profile as an individual lawyer um, to to get to you know be asked to speaking engagements and to be able to get that profile to over time bring in the bigger clients. But I, I didn't assume that I'd be able to do that on day one. It really was more just getting out there. And, and starting to build a personal profile first. Yeah, yeah. So it sounds like in a way you're almost your audience was also almost your own firm. <laughs> you wanted to make yes. yourself stand out in the firm, right? <laughs> that's <still> true. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's quite true, actually. Yes, yeah. and, and, and you know, and other and, and our community, right? Or other other lawyers in our community as well. Right. Yeah. So uh, how did you? What did you do with those? You know, in the in the earlier days to just kind of start to build a readership, or how did you? begin to realize that you were building a readership? Um, I mean, in the early days, I was, as far as I understood, I was the first woman employment lawyer in Toronto to blog. So it was easy to, you know, when I tweeted out, it was something kind of unusual for people. So there was um, a bit of novelty there and none of the big firms or, or, you know, certainly no global, but even national firms, nobody else was blogging on behalf of the company. There was just a couple of, you know, rogue individuals who were out there blogging. And, um, and so in the early days, it, it, you know, it, there wasn't a ton of noise yet. So it was actually much easier to build up a profile fairly quickly. Uh, so lots of tweeting and posting on my LinkedIn. Um, mostly those two vehicles. Now I think about it. Um, there was no Snapchat yet or TikTok or anything else. It really right, was those right. two mediums. Yeah. yeah. Well, and I, th I think those are still, you know, today, probably the two strongest mediums for, uh, for promoting your blog. Twitter uh, really is this engine yeah. I find, you know, it's, yeah. I mean, you have to come up with ways to, to help weed out the noise. But I remember in the first year of the blog, um, going to, to one of the, the people in, in my group, uh, we were busy planning uh, an in-person client event and, and everyone was super excited. There was going to be like 40 or 50 people showing up. And I said, well, I had at least, I, and I can't remember the number now, but it was like in the thousands of, of, of eyes that would have had access to the blog. So by me tweeting it out, and then if you just get a couple of people who have, you know, a thousand or two followers, that exponential impact of, mm -hmm of how far you can reach through the online. Um, it just, it's, it's incomparable. And, and it just, it all seemed like weird magic to everyone else at first. But to me that like, there's, 
there's an exponential impact of online that is very powerful. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I often say I, I feel like I haven't published a blog post until I've tweeted it out, put it yeah, out on Twitter. And, and I, yeah, I, yeah. I honestly see that in my stats. I mean, it, Twitter really mm -hmm. drives a lot of engagement with my blog posts. Uh, yeah, that, that just publishing it doesn't do it. I, I'm still not even sure. And as you say, a little, a little mysterious and magical, but it's, it's great that it works. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, so, you know, you, you, you said a few moments ago that your, you know, the audience that you probably had in mind when you started out has evolved over the years. So, so how has mm -hmm. your career evolved and how has the blog evolved along with your yeah. career? Well, and, and here's some tips for, for newer lawyers out there, because I was very, very deliberate about always paying for my own blog, never having the firm reimburse me because I wanted to own it. I was very, yeah. very careful about that in case I ever left. And I, you know, I, I, I you know, um, certainly didn't know when I set it up that I was leaving. I, 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 I really enjoyed being at that firm. Um, but over time, the bug, the entrepreneurial bug really got to me and I, I, I started to want to start my own firm and, and, and I left to do that. And then I had this, this blog, this audience available to me. So um, once I left the nature of the employers I'm servicing, I, you know, I do have um, a bunch of, of global employers, but I also have a ton of small businesses, tech startups uh, and employees. Um, we've always spoken to the employer in, in our blog, that, that's always the target for me. Um, but definitely over time, it's, it's come into more and more of a niche. And as we build out legal product in our firm and really sell to specific people, um, the, what we're talking about in our blog also changes. And, and so, because I assume the audience is definitely changing. Yeah, I, I think that point you made about owning the blog is so important to underscore. Mm. And we, we've had we've had a couple of other lawyers on on this show who, who made the same point. And, and I think a lot of a lot of people don't think about that when they're maybe a younger lawyer starting a blog. Uh, they, they don't see the impact that the blog might have on their career and the way that, that it will remain mm -hmm. instrumental in their career. Uh, yeah. And, uh, you know, you want it to be portable, you want to be able to take it with you as your career moves whatever direction it moves in uh, you know yeah be, and, go into well, academics or something else but yeah go ahead i'm sorry exactly no well and the blog is part of that whole ecosystem i mean the more you're out there um and you get a few people that will retweet you or you get on the on the radar of, of conferences or media it all it all builds out this whole ecosystem and so i think yeah it, it's um when you're when you're starting out there's no better platform than the internet. I, I mean, I, I not sounds trite now, but it wasn't so obvious 10 years ago. Yeah. So how does the, where does the blog fit in with your firm now? I mean, so, so other mm -hmm. lawyers in your firm are now also contributing to your blog. Yes. As well, right? or, and I think that's an yeah. important, I, I need to give the shouts out to, you know, the lawyers in our firm. So when I started Spring Law, I, I, you know, I didn't want it to be the Lisa Stam show. It's always been, I want it to be greater than the sum of its parts. So we, we transitioned the, the, the Lex blog blog over to, to the full team. And then we also um, post on our own firm blog, but identical content. And it's just, I don't know, we're trying to game SEO a little bit, but, um, and because the SEO of Lex blog of my blog has always been way better than the website of my firm. So I had to, like, I want to honor that. So, um, so yeah, right now our, our full team of lawyers, we all take turns uh, writing on the blog and then um, uh, Hillary Page, one of our lawyers, she really takes the lead on, um, she's got a great saucy style of writing and she really takes the lead on, on like doing most of the content right now and, and um, overseeing it all. Yeah. Do you, um, is the blog part of, you know, the conversation that you have at, at firm meetings or something? Are you talking about who's going to be doing what this week? Are you coordinating yep. in any way or is it? Yeah. We have a whole, um, we, we're on the Google platform, so we, we use Google Chat, so we have a whole um, chat room for the blog to decide who's doing it and, you know, whoever is writing it that week throws in the, the draft so that you have at least one other, one or two other sets of eyes on it quickly, one of our admin for all the typos and then she'll eventually post it and then um, just to make sure it also fits in with the overall messaging that we want to, to you know, and the overall brand of the firm, but yeah, yeah. it's, it's, um, our, our goal, by the way, um, when for any newer uh, lawyers out there as well, is not to blog every three seconds. Our goal always is one a week. 
If you can just do one blog a week of around 500 or less words, you've got a ton of content to just push out all over the place all the time. And yeah. I, and, and we, we never, we don't do more than that. Occasionally during COVID, if there was yet another law that got changed, we'll throw a quick one out, but um, it's otherwise every Wednesday morning, we send a blog out and that's, that's all. So it's, it's not it. that it needs to be every, you know, I know Seth Godin says we have to do it every day, but um, I'm not Seth Godin. I'm just some, you know, kid from Toronto. So. Yeah. Every, every day at 4 a.m., I think is what he says. Yeah, like of course. <laughs> <laughs> no, thank yeah. you. Uh, yeah. I mean, I blog every day, but definitely not at 4 a.m. unless I'm having a really bad night. Yeah, um, <laughs> yeah that's 4 at night. Not and then I'll the probably regret it, right? Uh, <laughs> yeah. And, and um, so, I mean, when you said you have, then you have a whole lot of content to push out. So what do you mean by that? Are you yeah. pushing it out through other channels, using it in other ways, repurposing it, as they say? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So we have a couple of other um, platforms that pick up our blog regularly and include it in their mix. Um, so it's a great way to repurpose your existing content elsewhere. Um, and then just, you know, for some posts that are more evergreen in nature, um, we'll repost that, on, you know, on Twitter or LinkedIn or different platforms. Um, you know, a, a couple of months later, for example. So we, we, we have someone in place that takes care of that and we'll um, reshare existing content down the road as well, if it's evergreen. Yeah. So uh, over the course of the time you've been blogging, you've gone from associate at a big firm to owner of your own firm. Has the, do you think the blog has played a role in that? Do you think it's, it's facilitated your ability to, to move in that way through your career? I do. I mean, um, the, the in terms of building out a profile in, in my local community, I think it's been really important in the Toronto employment law communities and, you know, getting on speaking panels and people knowing what I want to talk about because they've seen the blog posts of what I like to talk about. Um, so I, uh, especially in the early years, very frequently got asked to speak on social media in the workplace, um, technology in the workplace, because I was blogging about it all the time. Right. Um, getting media interviews, um, uh, you know, um, without any sort of marketing agent. It's just through the blog, they'll right. pick it up. Right. Uh, and then lots of leads and, and clients through the blog. I, I think in the first year or so, while I was at a big firm, um, first couple of years in the big firm, I, I, I didn't get any clients, but now everybody Googles first. And even if they've, you're, you know, they've heard of you through a friend or, or a, a previous client of the firm, they're still going to go and check right. you out online. I mean, that's, I think right. that's uh, beyond common knowledge. And the, the content and authority of a good blog is, is core to that. Otherwise they don't know who you are if you're not blogging about, about what you like to talk about and how you can help people. Yeah. So do you have any sense of how that blog has translated into business for your firm? I ask knowing that you know the answer. <laughs> uh, and I answer knowing that I asked you to ask me that because <laughs> cause I, that's the one thing I did before this interview. Um, uh, I did check out my Clio Grow to see what, what the pipeline was for this. And um, in 2020, about 20% of our leads that came into the firm are through the blog specifically, but then at, um, all together about 46 of our leads right now in 2020 are from online. And I, I and that's 46% or 46, 46% of, percent, of yeah. all the leads coming into our firm are uh, that, um, uh, that, that, um, that we that hired us so not just mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. um potential ones that were kicking tires so um and that's a combination of website google social media our webinars but that's the ecosystem that the blog right. is like the this the core um content authority in the midst of that whole ecosystem so i mean almost half of what comes into the firm is now through all of this and i would never have um I would never have anticipated that when I first started the blog. It really was just to have like a platform out there to build up a bit of authority. Yeah, yeah. And even though you can't attribute all of that directly to the blog, the blog is what, we, we, if I hear what you're saying, is kind of the cornerstone mm -hmm. of of your online presence uh, and, and what drives at least uh, a lot of that uh, awareness and recognition. 
Well, half half is specifically from the blog. The thing is, when when our intake people are are, are bringing people in, they ask, and some people just say website or right. Google, and and they're finding us on Google because of our blog, right? So that's why I to me it is all part of the same same number in a way. Yeah. So. Uh, other than bringing on other people to help you uh, write the blog now, and in, in terms of the other lawyers in your firm, uh, has your own blogging style changed over the years? How you write a post, or your understanding of how you want to write a post, is it has that evolved at all? Um, no. Which I don't know if that's a bad answer. <laughs> I have not evolved. It's been stagnant for eleven years. It's, but but who we're talking to. That, of course, changes over yeah. time. And our whole economy, I mean, aside from cr the craziness of 2020, the whole, um, the, the expansion of the online economy and how we all think about delivering legal services, the internet, like everything has just changed in the last 11 years so quickly. Um, yeah. And so who we talk to and what we're talking about uh, has very much changed. But from day one, I've wanted it to be very conversational, a little bit irreverent um and and fresh something fresh yeah. that that and not i rarely do super boring reviews of the latest case that went out you know it's yeah. it's it's practical things that people want to hear about yeah there's actually great your 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 entire website not just your blog has i don't know who wrote all your website copy but somebody had a irreverence in mind when they wrote some oh, of your, you. your website copy this 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 uh, this uh, made me smile <laughs> at several points as i was going okay. through i wrote it all so there you go <laughs> oh, it's, it's, so, <laughs> which is why i needed people to help me with the blog because i <laughs> i actually keep getting told get out of the website i just love tinkering in behind the scenes in our wordpress and it's it's not the best use of my time but i can't help myself yeah well that's okay <laughs> that's okay it's your firm you can do what you want yeah <laughs> yeah so um you, you mentioned the, the, the what you write, who not only who you write for, but what you write mm -hmm. about has has changed. So what are you writing? What's what are the hot issues these days? What are you writing about? What, what are your readers caring about right now, especially in this face well, of the, the situation yeah. we find ourselves in? Uh, they care about the, the most recent change in COVID laws. Right. And, and so yeah. it's I, I think our our writing schedule for 2020 has really been bumped aside to to um the the you know the uh all the changes that keep happening you know uh, around yeah. all the government relief and and all, all these poor small employers that are trying to figure out what they have to do with facing bankruptcy and what do they do the idea of um really trying to deliver one to many instead of bespoke overpriced one-on-one -on -one legal services for right. a common problem that many many employers face um, you know, we, we, we do write about that a bit, but uh, yep. COVID keeps bumping into us all the time, like right. everybody else. Like everybody else. Do you get, yeah. uh, do, do you find that your readers, uh, other, you know, you, again, you, you mentioned that readers have, uh, not readers, but some people who come to your firm have specifically cited your blog. Uh, do you, do you, other, other than that, do your readers, in, you engage with your readers at all, or your readers engage with you at all uh, around your blog? I mean, do you ever get feedback mm -hmm. on the posts that you write or hear from them, or does that lead to any other kinds of conversations? That's such a great question. You know, in the early days, I was warned by everyone at Lex Blog, don't get hurt if nobody comments. And um, so I've always had it in my mind ever since not to expect it. And we really, we actually get almost no comments on the blog. Right. If yeah. anything, they'll either come through the contact page on our website through our Clio Grow integration yeah. or um, on Twitter or on, you know, on, on other platforms once in a while. Um, but, but uh, yeah, we haven't had people sort of take us on or challenge. I, I don't know that we write terribly controversial things, uh -huh. but yeah. But not really. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's not it's not at all unusual to not get comments. Mm -hmm. I don't. I, I think it's unusual to get comments these days, yeah. unless you're unless you're writing for you know some super high high profile uh, national publication or something. I mean, the, mm -hmm. the, the mm -hmm. conversation tends to happen more on Twitter or LinkedIn or or whatever else yeah. if, if there's going to be feedback at all. Um, yeah. You know, you've been you've been blogging for uh, uh, what did I say? Eleven years now. Um, any advice for somebody who's new to this, who's just starting a blog? What what kinds of lessons have you learned about what makes a blog work or or what not to do with a blog? 
Um, skip all the, the legal um, academic stuff. Nobody cares. Nobody wants to read that. Keep it short. Keep the sentences short. Lots of white space. Lots of headings. Never write more than two or three paragraphs in a row without another heading. Lots of bullets. All of, all of that. Um, one thing I hear from people a lot is, how do I know what to write about? And I, I think the, the easiest thing is just sit down and think about what are the, what are the top 12 questions clients have had over the last little while, or if you're new and there's so many um, uh, recent grads uh, up here at least who are really scrambling to find work, um, write the top 10 aspirational questions of your aspirational client and just go be an expert on that, but keep it short and, and easy to read. Well, that's good advice. Uh, Lisa, we, uh, we need to wrap it up, but I really appreciate mm -hmm. your taking the time to uh, be with us today. And I enjoyed speaking Thank with you. you. Yeah, you too, Bob. Thank you very much. Uh, we've been speaking with Lisa Stam of the Employment and Human Rights in Canada blog, which you can find at CanadaEmploymentHumanRightsLaw.com and also of the firm Spring Law. And uh, as I said earlier, you can find all of our shows on YouTube at youtube.com slash lexblog and, uh, and on Spotify and Apple Podcasts. Uh, Lisa, stay well. Thank you. And you too. All right. And uh, that does it for this week. We will be back next week, same time, uh, with another great episode of this show. Look forward to talking to you then.